Hey, I'm Alex, and today I'm going to walk you through the cache problem from PSAT 6 at HarvardX. Now, if you've already implemented it with C, which I assume you have since that's part of PSAT 1, um, you, probably, you can probably guess that it's going to be easier in Python. However, I intend to present you with a bit of a different solution, which I believe is more elegant. Um, it's not more difficult, so um, you can stick to it even if you're beginners. Uh, but it's not going to have, uh, like, it's going to have one while loop to take the user input, but it's not going to consist of any other while loops or if statements. Um, and let's now go to see the requirements. Now, I have already installed the files. Um, if you haven't, it's very easy and intuitive. You can just follow the steps. Um, let's quickly go through the specification. So, we have this file cache pi. Um, and like we ask the user for the change which is old and we have to, to spit out the minimum number of coins we can use. Um, we should use the getFloat method from the CS50 library uh, and print the output our answer. Uh, now we only have quarters uh, with a value of 25 cents, dimes 10 cents, nickels 5 cents and pennies 1 cent. Um, this is information about the formatting. I'm going to skip it for now, but I encourage you to read it. And if the user fails to provide a non-negative value, um, your program should re-prompt the user for a valid amount. Um, so this means that the value can be zero, it can be positive, but it cannot be negative. Uh, we should keep that in mind, and so actually we're going to take care of this in the beginning. Um, so first let's import the getFlow method from the CS50 library. So we have from CS50 import get float like that. And now let's first ask the user for the change. Um, I'm going to initialize a variable called change. It's going to equal get float. And we can pass in some kind of a prompt. Um, so I'm going to say just um, change out. Uh, sorry, I misspelled it, change out like that. Once we have it, we want to check if it's a non-negative number. Um, and if it is, or while it is an invalid number, we want to pre-prompt our user for the input. So I'm going to say while the change is less than zero, so while it is a non-negative number, while it is invalid, um, please ask the user again. So I'm just going to copy the same thing. I want to pre-prompt the user. All right. And let's just come here and print change to ensure, to ensure that we have implemented it correctly. Um, so I'm going to say python uh, cache.py, sorry, pi. I'm going to use this thing, for instance, and we saw that it worked. However, if we enter a negative value, minus 4, it reprompts me for a positive one. Okay, perfect. Um, so this works, and this was basically the last while loop we're going to use in our solution. Um, now, let's get to the real part. First, it's going to, now we have a floating point number, which is dollars. And we can actually convert them into cents by multiplying the number by 100. So I'm going to initialize a new variable here, which is going to be cents. And it's going to equal the change times 100. Because if we have 0 0.41, like in this example here, we want to multiply by um, 10, uh, sorry, by 100 to get 41 cents. And let's just test it real quick, print cents. So I'm going to rerun the program, I want 0 0.41. And we indeed see 41 cents, but it's still float. We can still see the decimal part, which is 0 0.0. Um, now, if you want to remove it, which is going to ease the process, of the solution, we can just say int of this thing. So calculate this expression and then convert it into an integer. And if we rerun this, we should be able to see 41 as an integer, like that. All right, now let's initialize our coins variable. That's where we're going to store the coins we have already used. Um, now, in the beginning, it's going to be zero because we obviously don't know how many coins we'll need. Now, the next part is where things get interesting. Um, I'm first going to write it. So we are going to need this for every type of coin. The first one is a quarter, which has a value of 25 cents. 
So let me just write it and then I'm going to explain. I'm going to say coins plus equals um, cents. I'm going to see the floor division operator and I'm going to see divide by 25. Now let me explain what's happening here. Let's say that our change is 0 0.41 and we convert it into cents, which is just 41 cents. Basically, what I'm doing here with this floor division operator is I'm saying how many times can 25 go into 41? Um, well, it can go once, right? Because when we subtract it once from, 20, uh, from 41, we get 16 and we cannot subtract 25 anymore. So this is just division, but it's giving us a whole number, not a floating point. Um, so it can only go once, right? And we're going to take the value of this expression, in this case 1, and add it to the coins variable. Our initial value is 0, and now we're going to add one coin to this variable. Um, okay, perfect. And now, the other thing we need for every type of coins is to say cents, uh, percents equals 25. Now, the percents means the remainder operator. So it takes the result from the upper operation and gives the remainder. So when we subtract 25 from 4 to 1, we are left with 16 cents because we've already taken out one coin, which is a quarter. It has a value of 25 and we want to sub subtract it. So we're going to be left with 16 cents. Now I'm going to do this for every other type of coin. So we have values of, um, let me check, 10, 5, and 1. 5, uh, sorry, it's 10 here, 5, and 1. Like that. Um, and that's pretty much the entire solution. In the end, we just want to print um, the, the coins. Now, I know you probably still feel confused. Um, that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to test it real quick now, and then I'm going to walk through it with the debugger so that you can get a deeper understanding of the solution. So, I'm going to call this again, 0 0.41, and we get a result of four coins. Let's see if that's correct. Yes, it is. Let's test with another value, for instance, this one. I'm sorry. Um, now, the reason this one was considered invalid is because I entered this to, like, before getting the prompt, but this worked, and we get, and we got the result of T, which is indeed correct. Okay, I'm going to run check 15 in the end, but first, let's go through the solution with our debugger. So I'm going to add a breakpoint here on line 3, and I'm going to run it. So debug 50 python, oh, sorry, cache.py, cache.py. We're just waiting a bit and we should be able, okay, we see our debugger panel. So we are now on line three and we are asking the user for the change. So I come here and let me first enter an invalid number to explain what's happening inside of our, our while loop. So I'm going to enter minus three, for instance. And we are now on line five and we're asking, is minus three less than zero? Well, it is, right? So it is invalid and we get inside of the body of our while loop and we reprompt this for the change. So now I'm going to get a new prompt and I'm going to enter a valid number, so 0 0.41. Um, so is 0 0.41 less than 0? Well, it's not, right? It's actually a valid number. That's a valid change. So since this is false, it's not less than 0, we're going to skip line number six and we're going to continue on line eight, like that. Okay, so we already have the change and now we want to convert it into cents. So we're going to take 0 0.41, you can see it here on the right, and we can multiply by 100 and then convert it into an integer. So now we have cents, which equals 41. Um, by the way, you could have used like the same variable change and just assign it a new value. I prefer to have a new like this sense variable, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, now we initialize our coins variable, which has a value of zero in the beginning, as you can see here on the right. And here comes the interesting part. 
So first we take the cents. How many cents do we have? We can look it up here. We have 41 cents. And we are asking how many times can 25 go into 41? Well, only once. So we take this value of 1 and add it to the coins. We currently have 0 coins and we want to add 1 because we have 1 quarter, which we can use. And we can see that we indeed um, have the value of 1. Okay, but now we have already taken one coin, like one quarter, so we want to subtract this 25 from uh, 41, which is the previous number of the cents, to see how many cents we are left with. So we want the remainder from this division, which should be 16, and we can see that our value is 16. Then we do the same for 10. How many times does 10 go into 16? Well, obviously only once. Um, so we're going to be like we're going to add one more coin. Coins is now t, and we're also going to subtract like we had 16 cents, and now we subtract 10 because we added one um, dime, and we are left with six. Now we have how many times does five go into six? Well, only once, and we're going to be like we're going to have three coins now. We're adding one. And we want to subtract these five uh, cents, so we're currently left with one cent only. And then we say on line 20, how many times does one go into one? Well, obviously once. We're going to add the fourth coin, and in the end, we're going to take the remainder of one divided by one, which is just zero. Okay, so now we see that we're left with zero cents, which is which was actually our goal because. We wanted to see the minimum number of coins, which is in this case 4, and we can just come here and print it on the console. All right, perfect. Now let's run um, check 50 here to so make sure that it works. And as we can see, all of our tests are green, which means that our program works correctly. So that was everything for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to enter my Discord community where I help CS50 students. Bye for now, and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial.